How's it going everyone? Welcome back. So in today's tutorial, you're going to learn how to build a Python web app that incorporates scikit-learn and allows you to tune the parameters of your scikit-learn uh, models directly on the web. So here's an example. We have an uh, input field for test size, and as soon as we change this, you'll see the accuracy score change as well. If we change the maybe select the, the n estimators or the random forest, also it will recalculate the random forest classifier and, and spit out a new accuracy score. So this Python web app also has a dash ag grid table where you have the columns that can move around uh, and you have five rows per per uh, page so you can you can go through all 320 pages if you want or go all the way to the end and you have two plotly graphs that um, display the average distribution of the fixed acidity in all wines and the ph of all wines so how do we build this Python web app incorporating scikit-learn? The best way to do this, or the easiest way to do this, is using Plotly and Dash, and I'm going to show you how to do this right now. Uh, to follow along, I highly recommend you click on this link that's going to be under the video, and just copy all of this code by clicking on this, copy it, and insert it into your VS Code or PyCharm, wherever you want on your computer so it's easier for you to to see what I'm talking about now I uh, ran this code I clicked on this link and this is the app that we see so let's see a breakdown of the app code the first couple of lines we're just incorporating the um, importing the libraries that we're going to use throughout this application this section um, is where we um, read the wine uh, quality uh, data set into a pandas data frame and you're probably familiar with, with these four lines of code um, where we're just preparing the the data set for uh, testing and training and then we're just printing out all the columns it's just easier to see here the columns than than to see here in the ag grid table because i want everything on one page then we instantiate our dash app and th the biggest part of the code is this section in the app layout right between line 20 to line 56 everything you put inside the layout is what is going to display on the page so we can quickly quickly look at this and you can see here in the layout on line 22 we have our our header scikit learn with dash and then we have one row that's divided into three different column components, each with the width of three, one, two, and three. And this first one just has a select test size text, and then it has an input field with 0.2 as the initial value. So if we refresh, you'll see 0.2, and minimum and maximum from 0.1 to 0.9. So it cannot go over 0 0.1 or less than 0. Point, uh, 0 0.9 or less than 0.1. Then we have in the middle another text and input field and then at the very end we have our accuracy score with an empty children now this is an empty children since if you go all the way down to line 59 and hashtag this out from 59 to 79 hashtag this out so we don't see it you will only end up with what the layout displays and the layout doesn't have an accuracy score. The accuracy score children is is nothing, is an empty string, right? Soon we will use the callback to do the calculations uh, to take this um, uh, numbers that are uh, inputted by you or the app user, do the calculations of the random forest classifier and spit out an, an accuracy score. But for now, we just want to see the layout section of the app, right? Um, so underneath the first row on line 38, we have our dash ag grid. This is the table where you can move the columns around and do different things. Um, and underneath the table, we have another row with two different um, graphs. Uh, both of them are histograms, but one represent the fix, uh, uh, distribution of fixed acidity and the other one represents its distribution of uh, pH. All right, so let's bring the callback back on hashtag it like this. I'm going to reload. 
And if I refresh the app, you'll see that now we have an accuracy score. And every time we change the test size or anything else here, the accuracy score updates as well. So how do we do this? So the callback is divided into a callback decorator and a callback function. This callback function has two arguments because we have two inputs, specifically two component properties, value and value. The first value pertains, which is this, this is the same as this. The first value pertains to the test size. Now, if you go to the test size, this is an ID of, of which component, let's see. This is the ID of this component, the first input field, right? So the value of test size is 0 0.2. So this is going to be 0 0.2, this is going to be 0 0.2. And then the value of an, an estimator, this is the second input field right here, an estimator, the value is 150. Um, so this is 150 right here. But if we change this to 140, then this will be 140. So now that we have these two arguments that represent the uh, uh, input fields as dynamic values, anytime somebody changes the input field, it will trigger the callback function, it will train and test, it will apply the standard scaling that you're probably all familiar with if you have used scikit-learn before, and also do a random forest classifier, and then it will spit out the accur accuracy score. But it's important to note that these test size and, and estimators are equal to the value that the user chooses in the input field, right? So we do everything that we need to do to uh, um, uh, uh, predict our X test and get an accuracy score. And then we get this number that we return right under here. Now, how do we return this right here? What we do is any object that is returned from the callback function or in the callback function is assigned to the component property of the output, right? So the component property of the output is children. So this score will be assigned to the children of placeholder. Remember this placeholder that we talked about at the very beginning right here? The children of the placeholder was an empty string, but now it's going to receive the value of score, right? Which is the object of, of the callback function. And that is how every time you change the test size to click enter, or change an estimator and click enter or outside with the mouse, the ac this will uh, be triggered, the callback function, and a new accuracy score will be displayed on the page. So that's how you combine scikit-learn into a Python web app. In this case, we used uh, the powerful library of Dash and Plotly. Uh, if you have any questions, definitely ask them under the video. If you have any comments, any suggestions for other videos that you would like to see, definitely let us know in the comment section. We hope you enjoyed. If you did, like the video. Until next time.